have those moments playing city skylines where you just feel stuck? You may have started a new city for the third or even fourth time in half a year, and you're full of energy and inspiration until you just hit a wall. Everything looks great from far away, but there's all these little half-filled blocks in odd-shaped empty spaces. What do you do with them? Let's talk about it. I'm Diana, and today we're building the city of Astoria in Cascadia Bay. So I've been thinking a lot about this project lately and where to take it, and sort of got ahead of myself with ideas. Pressuring myself to come up with that next big algorithm-friendly hit video concept. When I decided to just say fuck it and free build with no particular plan in mind, and as I started playing, I noticed one thing that I really kind of neglect in most of my builds is utilities and other supporting service buildings. I sort of placed the tram depot in this area as a placeholder and was gonna hide it somewhere off screen later and then do the same with sewage and power. But I felt like there was a better, more realistic way to handle this. The city itself is gonna be reliant on public transit quite a bit. And since it's at least partially inspired by San Francisco, why not add some trolley buses? I know, they're a terrible method of transit in game, but I think they'll look nice. So I started the build by adding in trolley bus roads and created a couple of lines to serve downtown. I also had placed a couple of water treatment plants in some stupid place way off on the edge of town. But I felt that these could be a complementary use to create a city services district sort of underneath and near the main highway and then adding in this power transformer next to it to supply electricity to downtown. Naturally, the land near these sorts of uses wouldn't be the most desirable place to live. So it has become sort of a warehouse and industrial district, taking advantage of the close proximity to the freeway, as well as downtown's commercial and population centers for easy delivery of goods and short commutes for employees. I'm very vaguely taking some inspiration from the various warehouse districts in San Francisco near the elevated freeways, in particular this area in the Bayview District near I-280. I thought that a nice use of this large, odd-shaped lot would be to create a little municipal vehicle maintenance yard. I'm mostly adding buses, but also a few police and fire vehicles, and a garage on site where broken vehicles could be repaired. You often see these sorts of locations near warehouse districts and transit depots, so I felt it would be a nice little touch of realism to add it. Underneath the highway was the perfect spot for this taxi depot. I'm using a small custom taxi depot asset and then adding in a large fenced off area behind it for the storage of taxis of various types. Again, what I'm doing here is taking advantage of these less desirable areas in the urban core to fit in little details that are often missed when building cities in this game. In real life, it's super common for the spaces underneath elevated highways to be used in this manner. Not all space underneath highways has to be devoted to undesirable uses. Closer to the residential districts of downtown are lots of beautiful little parks and other walkable green spaces. These sorts of areas are incredibly important for quality of life and make the neighborhood much more livable despite its proximity to the elevated freeway. I'm also taking the opportunity to fill out some of the odd shaped blocks at the end of downtown by modifying buildings with procedural objects to make them fit into awkward corners. I find that the distort feature of PO is the best way to easily make a simple building fit into a space that's not quite a 90 degree angle. But with more complex buildings or odder angles, there are better options. A good way to fill up these sorts of blocks is by creating little fenced off courtyards near apartment buildings to make a more open but complete looking lot. In dense cities like the one I'm building, Often every inch of available land is used, including the area between the looping highway ramps. For this particular one, since it's the first exit off of a bridge, I'm modeling it off of this area, coming off of the Queensboro Bridge in Queens, New York, and mostly putting in warehouses. But in my city of Astoria, they're repurposed, converted into residential lofts. The empty space underneath the elevated highways is also great for public parking lots. 
This is super common in cities everywhere and is a much more responsible practice, allowing cars their space without sacrificing even more historic structures to make room for private vehicles. Throughout the build, I've made sure to add in some road wear and damage decals to show that these spaces are heavily utilized. It helps with adding that little touch of realism and makes the city look a little less sanitized and artificial. It's time to start expanding the city outside of the main downtown core. The neighborhood on the other side of the US 101 freeway is called South Slope. It's named after the South Slope neighborhood in the real town of Astoria, Oregon, which the map is based on, but it's much higher density and mixed use. The main street of South Slope is called Only Avenue. Also known as State Route 202, this road hugs the riverfront and will serve as the backbone for all forms of transportation across the southern side of the city. For the area closest to downtown, we're adding mostly office and commercial buildings to help buffer some of the industrial uses nearby. I'm again using the distort feature of procedural objects to make some of these buildings fit into the blocks a little better. Off camera, I came in and added some office and commercial block services so they can function appropriately in game. The offices along this section of Olney Avenue are mostly mid-rise, which provides a nice tapering off effect from the skyscrapers in the downtown core and helps give the city a more realistic look as opposed to just having all gigantic buildings just turn into low density with no context or transition. Most of the areas further down Olney Avenue are high density condos, many with views of the beautiful riverfront. The train here starts to get super steep and it's one of the more challenging areas to build on, which is part of why I picked this location to make a map, because I got tired of building on these endless flat plains. For most of this area, I wanted to create a nice terrace look. A few weeks ago, I was driving across the Bay Bridge into San Francisco and noticed the way that the buildings in Telegraph Hill look sitting along the waterfront, and I kind of wanted to mimic this effect a bit. As we get a bit further up the hill, we're starting to get into some of the roads that I've laid out based on their actual locations in the real town of Astoria, and I've decided to keep some of those in place and then follow the general terrain contours for the new roads, as once you get this high up, the terrain is much too steep to continue a standard grid. As you see with this particular area, I was very thoughtful in picking the buildings with a somewhat small footprint, which gave me room to put a long strip of parking behind them. I did level out some areas to give myself more space to build, although I tried to make a layered look and keeping the general terrain contours as to not flatten out the entire hillside. What I find most important when working with these steep hilly areas is not to really worry too much about how a building sits on each slope itself, but to think of everything in relation to the buildings around it and the neighborhood as a whole. Some buildings do look really nice in repeated patterns along sloped areas and can work wonders in covering up those nasty cliffs. And of course, the Move It mod is your best friend as you can creatively position things to line them up in a way that works. The South Slope neighborhood is located along the banks of the Young's River. Much of the waterfront is lined with beautiful parkland, paths, and piers. I'm using procedural objects again to create a boat launch ramp for the local residents to use for fishing or recreation, adding in a little prop boat at the end with a truck and empty boat trailer in the parking lot. These two blocks of stilt houses are some of the last remaining pockets of low density homes in the central city, having existed here for decades prior to the higher density development that came to South Slope. Their location along the riverfront makes them some of the most desirable properties in town, and efforts have been made to redevelop these areas, but many of the residents who live here are the descendants of those first families who helped found the city in the early 19th century and wield significant political power. So it's likely that they're here to stay. Also along Olney Avenue, just above these homes, is a very small business district. Similarly, mostly consisting of historic properties and small shops that are all that remains of the once small town charm of this part of Astoria. Further up the hills at the very edge of the South Slope neighborhood are some single family homes built in a traditional American style. These homes predate the higher density areas on the southern end of town and are a closer approximation of what life is like in the real life version of Astoria 
With the early 20th century homes on winding roads in the beautifully forested hills surrounded by pines. If you enjoy these sorts of more freeform city expansion style videos, I recommend you check out this video from my other series of Saltaire, which is based on Salt Lake City. And while you're at it, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes of Cascadia Bay.